a brand new severe noise AI model, some updates to comparison view, some improved performance. Uh, those are some of the features in Topaz Denoise's latest update 3.1. My name is Matt Kluskowski, and like many of you, uh, I launched Topaz uh, a while back and there was an update available. So I went ahead and updated it. I noticed that there was actually a brand new AI model amongst a couple other things in there. So I figured I would make a video here to walk you through what's new inside of there. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in here. I'm gonna start this one off inside of Lightroom, pretty high ISO photo. So this one is uh, 25,600. I know it doesn't look like there was um, not a lot of light here, but there, there was actually a, a fair amount of lack of light here. So I used a higher ISO to get a better exposed photo. I'm not gonna do a whole lot to it other than just to click auto inside of Lightroom because it does a really good job. Maybe open up that exposure just a little bit more. I don't really have to do too much more. Um, and then from here, we'll jump over into Photoshop. There's a couple of distractions I wanna go through here. Another common question is, is do I do any noise reduction or sharpening in Lightroom? I just leave it at its default, which is extremely minimal inside of here. Um, but at this point, I think, you know, there's a couple of distractions there and down in the bottom corner. I could go up here to photo, edit in. And if I was ready to jump into Topaz Denoise, I could do it right here from Lightroom, which I would if I didn't have any Photoshop work to do. But because I wanna do a little bit of Photoshop work, I can always do it from there as well. So I would go and jump over into Photoshop for this one. Once we get there, um, the first thing I'll do is go over to the toolbox and grab my healing brush. I'm gonna hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt key on PC to sample an area, and then just go and paint and get rid of that little branch. And then I'll option or I'll click down here and paint and get rid of that. All right, Lightroom's got a little bit of cloning and healing. It's just not as powerful as Photoshop. So I prefer to do all that work here. If I wanted to spend the time, I could probably even get rid of that little area on the right-hand side. But for our sake, we can go ahead here and jump over into Topaz. So I'll just go filter, go down here to Topaz Labs and choose Denoise AI. As it opens up here, you notice yours truly has a photo on the splash screen. So big thanks to the folks over at Topaz for using that. And let's go ahead and just, I'm gonna prepare my single view of the image here. And I'm gonna zoom in to 200% just because in video, it makes it easier to see. In real life, I generally don't do this because I'm never, nobody's ever gonna see my photo at 200%, but in video, it's just easier to see. And what you're gonna notice here is I had the standard AI model selected here, which, is actually the model that I use for most things. And by the way, if you notice a little bit of a name change, it has changed. So you can hover over that little, uh, that little question mark over there. But essentially standard used to be called Denoise AI, but that was the standard model. That was the model that most people used for most things. Okay, and then there was AI Clear. So Topaz just did a little bit of renaming here just to make things a little bit easier. So standard, is your denoise AI, but that is the typical standard model that works for most things. And you got your clear, which is AI clear. Low light hasn't changed at all. And by the way, none of those three methods have actually changed. They're just slightly renamed. And then we do have the addition of the new severe noise model here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that one and you'll see it does a much better job on a very high ISO photo like we have here. So if you take a look before and then after, again, before, after, uh, does a great job at removing the noise. Is it a little bit smoother? Yeah, but guys, you just, you can't shoot a 25,000 ISO and expect a tack sharp photo. Um, it just, it doesn't happen like that. So to me, I, I would consider this a success for a 25,000 ISO photo. All right, so that's a little bit about severe noise and that new AI model here. there. Uh, one of the, the things that I do the most and the way that I evaluate these is I actually go under the view uh, menu there and I change this to comparison view, okay? Move my little navigator around there and I'll go look at comparison view on most of my images and I'll see which one performs better. So one of the problems that you're gonna have is that comparison view work, there's four squares and you have your original of course being one of them and when there was only three AI models, it worked just fine, but now there's four AI models. So what you need to do is choose which ones you wanna see. So the active one is always gonna be the one that's got the blue highlight on it. So as I click there, severe noise is now active. Click down here, low light's now active. So what I can do 
is I can click in here and I can say, I want this one to be the standard model. And then I can leave this one as the clear model. And then down here, since I, I think, you know, I'm probably gonna use severe noise more than I would low light, I can go down there and I can click on that one. I can say, I want that one to be my severe noise model, okay? So that's the way that since we now have four AI models inside of here, uh, but only three windows to view this, you can just go through and pick uh, which ones that you wanna view in this window here. Okay. As for the settings, not too much different inside of those. So uh, we're not going to cover too much there. When you're done, you would just go in there and click apply and it'll apply it to that layer inside of Photoshop, which of course you would just hit file, save in Photoshop. And that would take you right back over into Lightroom. Now, last thing, uh, a couple things that are a little bit harder to demonstrate on the screen there. Uh, one of them is going to be improved performance. So if I had to ballpark it, I'd say 10% ish. Uh, performance, I definitely did notice that everything updated a little bit faster, so I would give it about 10% there. Um, and then you're also going to see some M1 support for native using the plugin natively inside of Photoshop. So uh, if you are using any of those new M1 chips uh, for Apple, you might want to check that out. Uh, and finally, you're probably on the Topaz website right now. Uh, if not, that's the best place to go if you want to find out more information about the update. Get the update, and if you want to find anything about my free tutorials and courses and presets, you can always swing by mattk.com.